Okay, good morning everyone and welcome to this live intraday strategy webinar. I just want to prompt you, we got the release of Canada retail sales showing contraction of 0.5%, little weaker than expected, uh, giving us a little pop here in the dollar CAD early in the session. Slight upward revision to the previous print on the headline, X Auto did see a decline also. So a little bit of soft data here. Uh, fueling some dollar cat strength early in the session. Uh, with that said, good morning to everyone. Peter Conwall, Kazaz in the house, uh, Ziaz in the house. Great to see you all. Uh, lots to cover today, uh, so I'm going to jump right in. As always, feel free to stop me with any questions, specific trade setups you guys want to review. On the docket for today, uh, we're going to talk about the DXY. Look, we were looking at resistance last night. You did see a little bit of a pullback, but it blasted right through. We're looking at that uh, at support. Uh, we'll go over Euro dollar, Euro yen from last night. Perfect uh, opening range break on Euro yen. Uh, Euro uh, pound came right into that key support and rebounded in overnight. So we'll talk about that. Uh, sterling was a perfect play last night. That was probably the best out of all of them. Uh, nice turn right at resistance. Uh, we'll talk about dollar CAD and the rebound there, which looks like it's dissipating. Here's what the real near-term charts just look like, guys, on the back of that release. So, seeing a nice little uh, 20 pip pop here to the upside. Let's see if it holds that 132 handle or not. This is initial resistance uh, for dollar CAD. We'll go over that trade. And then I do want to take a moment and talk about pound yen, which was another one that played out perfectly from the Sunday update. And then we'll leave any questions. Uh, we'll leave time for questions, guys. So Chintan says, good morning, Mike. After a long time, great to see you back in the room, Chintan. Cheers, mate. All right. Let's jump right in. Here's what we look like uh, heading into the U.S. Open. A quick reminder, at 2 o'clock, you do get the release of the FOMC minutes from the latest uh, uh, interest rate decision. Look, guys, I don't really expect there's going to be too much uh, volatility on this. Last week, as I said yesterday, we got the Humphrey Hawkins uh, testimony, which was a little bit more hawkish, uh, you could argue, from Yellen's side. And unless, let me take a step back. I guess the thing that you would be looking for in today's minutes is what's the consensus amongst the committee. If there is concerns from one or two members about um, inflation still being lagging too slow, or if there's more concerns, rather, that we need to hike uh, and keeping rates too low for too long is going to you know, risk an inflationary run, then that would be something the markets would move off of, okay? But we pretty much have a clear picture. Yellen was pressed for two full days of testimony last week. And unless we get any type of meaningful um, development today, you know, it could just shift around the dollar. Now, where the dollar is trading, it is vulnerable for a pullback. So my base case scenario is that you do still see some sort of exhaustion uh, on the minutes release. Uh, that being said, Let's go over what the index looks like so far. So to set up the uh, U.S. session, you can see that the dollar is indeed stronger against all its major counterparts, CAD being the biggest loser, uh, down 0.94% on the session, euro down 0.82, pound uh, down 0.74. Uh, the Aussie and the Kiwi, oh, excuse me, this is against the yen. I stand corrected. So the dollar is stronger against all its major counterparts, save the yen, uh, which is up by 0.57% so far in this session. Okay, a quick look at interest rate expectations. We've been following these for the last couple of days. I did want to note that the May interest rate expectation has now shown 60% for the first time. Remember, uh, May is not a quarterly meeting. This would be the first time that they would hike uh, on a non-presser meeting. And also, um, the first time being 60, and we noted yesterday that if you look at Fed Fund futures historically, every time they've hiked, Fed Fund futures has shown a percentage of 60% expectation or higher. So this changes things now. This makes it very apparent that the markets are in facting to say, um, or are, are anticipating that, yeah, we might actually see them move on rates as early as May. Personally, humbly, Michael Boutros, I don't see it. Uh, you know, I think they wait till June, but we'll, we'll have to see. You know, my opinion doesn't matter. It's what, what the Fed does that matters. So I uh, just wanted to highlight this. June is still at 76%. This has been above 70 since the start of the year. So really, it's the expectation that we'll be tracking is if that May continues to climb higher, um, you know, that's going to continue to keep the dollar pretty well supported. Okay. Mohammed saying that's too much. You're talking about the Fed fund futures, huh? 
I mean, it is what it is. He says, yeah, yeah, it is what it is. I think it's too much, too. May would be... Um, I mean, we could get into a whole discussion on this. If you ask me personally, we should have hiked more times last year. Uh, but where we are right now, yeah, I think an off-presser meeting on a May might be a little bit, little bit too early for the markets to be anticipating. We'll see. These change daily. I just wanted to point it out because this is the first time we're we're above 60 for the start since the start of the year, and that's significant. Okay, let's jump in. Here's what the dollar index looked like last night. Here's what the dollar index looks like on the daily chart right now. I'll show you the intraday in a moment. Uh, but what I wanted to highlight was this key resistance range. Okay, we flew through it last week and pulled right back. It also represents basic slope resistance here in red. You can see it here on the daily chart. Okay, we're basically probing that again. We broke the pullback did come right into that 101.24, reversed and broke higher, just missed 101.76, and we're right back here again at 101.53. Um, so you guys have seen this daily chart. Here's what the intraday looks like. So the levels have been pretty clean. Okay, I was looking for the spillover to get a little bit deeper. We caught that 101.24 right there. Again, the breakthrough instant support now, former resistance, now support. Notice strong divergence, price action with a higher high, the oscillator with a lower high, uh, does have me thinking that you're still looking at the same setup from last night. Okay, um, respect the upside while above 101.50, I will say that. If we head into the U.S. session, it starts to dribble down lower. I'm still looking for a drop near 101. Um, and who knows, maybe it's the minutes that charges that drop. But that being said, while we're above 101.50 here, you got to respect the upside. 101.76 is still that last uh, last week's high, the monthly high, and then a major confluence uh, would be up here at 102. All right, so I want to see how we react around this red slope here. It's been support, resistance, support, resistance, resistance, plow through, resistance. Is it going to act as support? If it does hold here into the U.S. Open, you could get that last thrust. Uh, but for me, no interest in trying to uh, get long from here. If we do get some more exhaustion, continued divergence, a nice trigger break. This is a two-hour chart, so I wouldn't want to wait for this trigger break, but here's one thing you could look at. Bring it to a 30 minute. Nothing there. Although you're still seeing some divergence into those highs. But yeah, it still looks like exhaustion for me. So I don't want to get too excited about the long side for the dollar just yet. A setback near 101 would definitely be appetizing. Uh, a breakthrough 101.76, you got to look for that run into 102. Okay, no changes to any levels from last night. And we'll keep bullish invalidation, guys, same level, 182 into 101. That's the weekly open into this key region of resistance, Fibonacci confluence. That is number one, DXY. Uh, number two from last night, Euro. Here's what the Euro looked like. So, for Euro dollar, again, you were coming into some support. I was looking for a rebound to get long off of this one, uh, or excuse me, a rebound to get back on the short side uh, off of this 105.26 level. It caught the lows last week, the 618 key retracement. On near term, the slope of the descending median line formation here converged there as well. You did get a pop um, from 105.30, almost as high as 105.56, big barely got a quarter of daily ATR uh, before just breaking even all the way on the downside. So downside break, you catch in some slope here at 104.92. The next major key level is 104.55 into 104.65. Uh, 104.65 just being a swing low. I guess I got to zoom out. From back here. Okay, that's uh, 2015, March of 2015. And then you have the 764 retracement, which also catches this low along the lower parallel, and that's 104.55. So the problem with continuing to favor the downside in euro here is with what the dollar is doing, guys. If the dollar is going to show exhaustion, remember, 
the dollar index is 60% weighted the euro. So it's basically flip euro dollar upside down, <laughs> almost that's what the dollar index uh, looks like. Um, what I'm seeing in the markets today is all the major CCY is down against US except the yen. Are we in a risk off environment uh, in the market? I wouldn't want to necessarily say risk off because if we look at equity markets, they've just continued to plow higher and I do think you can still see some more upside. A, uh, Europe is a little bit softer today, Asia was pretty strong and overnight, Nikkei saw a little bit of a pullback but nothing major. Um, futures are set. Uh, futures are set to open slightly softer. Dow's down about two points. Nasdaq down about, about half a point. So I wouldn't necessarily say it's a risk-off environment. I, do, I would say that there's a little bit more caution going around because of these animal spirits that you're starting to hear about. Um, and there are some divergences between some major assets that are happening, which also looks very interesting. So uh, I wouldn't say it's risk-off yet, Mohammed, but I definitely would say there's the markets do look like they're taking a little bit more of a cautionary approach here. Uh, even on the rallies that we're seeing, it's kind of just a slow grind higher. Uh, but for Euro, uh, again, similar situation that you're seeing on the index, right? Divergence, the oscillator holding the lows as price makes new lows. That's something you want to pay to attention to as well. And the only other thing I want to bring up in Euro is this 50 line here. I don't know if you can see that at home. Caught those lows here, and it seems to be giving us some pop here. At this point, four euro dollar, you want to bring down that bearish invalidation level to 105.82. You're at support right now along that slope. Like I said, the next major key support targets 104.55 into 104.65. Um, I'd be looking to sell a rally towards that median line if we get it. If you're holding shorts, a stop against the Asia high is fine. Look for that drop near 104.55, 104.65. I don't know if we'll get it, guys. The divergence here is, is not a strong signal, but the fact that we're seeing it on all these time frames and across all these assets is definitely something to pay attention to. So nimble, nimble is the name of the game. I was just talking about this with Jamie yesterday. Um, the markets are tricky these days, guys. The, the, the plays don't last. The moves don't last. You get a lot of chop. So nimble is the name of the game, okay? Euro dollar, number two, any questions? How would you play the euro dollar? Wait for 104.53 or uh, and go long counter trend? So whenever I say go long, Pete, it's always in a near-term intraday fashion. Okay, if I'm going long at 104.50, I'm not targeting 106. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I got no problem taking a counter trend trade for the first target, bring my stop to break even, see if we can get the second target. So I'll play counter trend all day. Uh, but it's got to be off of some key levels, and those key levels are usually defined by confluence regions. I want some Fibonacci, um, you know, uh, respect. I want some structural respect. I want some major key, key swing lows. That's when I'll be more uh, prone to playing counter trend. Also, that divergence, when it comes along all those factors, typically can be a very strong tell as well, right? Um, obviously, the trend is your friend. So, if, you know, on this, as I said in last night's update, I would have been interested in shorting from up here, in which case right now I would have uh, half my trade off or maybe two-thirds of that off, stops at break even, looking for a drop down into 104.50. It all depends where you are, where you're playing within the confines of the structure. Pete, does that make sense? Conwell says markets are behaving as they behave at the end of the month. Yeah, we're heading there. It's last full month. It's last full week, rather. Pete says, yeah, thanks, and you're more than welcome, Pete. Good question. Good question. Just as a disclaimer, I'm flat here on the euro. I really was expecting that rebound last night to give us a little bit more of a, of a stretch towards resistance. So we'll see if we can't get back into this one. All right, Euro-Yen was a much cleaner play, and Euro-Yen was a perfect, perfect break of the weekly opening range. So uh, for Euro-Dollar, guys, no change to any of the targets. Again, um, you know, this, this rebound didn't last too long. We're now sitting on this line right here. You're looking ultimately for a drop into this key zone of support. Uh, Euro-Yen, 
what a perfect weekly opening range, okay? Um, so last week, or we noted on Sunday that this thing had gapped into our final target, which was 119.65. Uh, we were looking for a rally early in the week to start to try to press a short. Um, once this drop happened, we talked about it in the webinar yesterday, it made a very nice weekly opening range. Your Monday, Tuesday, setting a high, testing the low, right? All that happened was that the monthly opening range gave out. This is also the weekly open. And once it did, 119.33, 119.03, both got taken out, these downside targets. Now, the drop here has gone beyond that in approaching another soft target that we had at 118.46 into 118.55. Just some key swing highs and some swing lows, okay? Um, just beyond that, you do have slope support. And if you choke this slope, if you take a parallel of this to the low, it converges right there today. Okay, so be mindful of this 118.46, 118.55 level uh, heading into the U.S. session. Uh, again, it's one of those trades. If you caught it, it was a really beautiful trade because even on the break here, um, this the ATR was fine to put a stop against the Asia high and try to press it. So Euro Yen played out really well. You want to stay, you want to look for near-term resistance right back at that parallel. Okay, as the immediate area of resistance in U.S. trade, see if we can't get that last stab in 2018.46 or that low uh, at the lower parallel. Pretty clean, though. Here's what the daily chart looks like, by the way. Okay, and there's those key regions, 18.46, lower parallel. This was big here. Okay, yeah, the 200-day moving average, or this is the 100-day moving average, excuse me, the 38-2 retracement, the 50 line, all got compromised with this break here today. All right, any questions on Euro Yen? Beautiful play. Probably one of the cleanest. Pound was really clean, too. We'll look at that in a moment, but... Um, that's a that's a perfect example, guys, of, of how weekly opening ranges work. Okay, you set a low, you test the high, you retest the high, we retest the low, and just wait for that break. Okay. Uh, Euro pound is up next. Perfect touch of key support barrier that we talked about um, since last week. Here's what Euro pound looks like. So the slow grinder. Uh, you know, I always call this trade the grandpa trade because it typically walks. It's just a slow burning trade. The ATR is not usually that big, um, but boy, when she chooses directions, it works. Last week we were looking at this, citing a downside bias below the monthly open. Point in fact, we set up a really nice weekly opening range that broke on Thursday, rallied into a Friday high, and we turned right at the monthly open. It's been a downside move ever since. Near-term support targets at 84.15 to 84.40 got taken out again. We noted that this is the next major key target, 83.90 into that 84 handle. Well, Euro Pound dropped right into that pocket and rebounded right off. So this is the next, you know, this is the sort of the hurdle to beat for more downside in Euro Pound. This kind of reaction. I want to curb my expectations. So from here on out, I don't really want to be doing anything with Euro Pound. I want to see how it's going to resolve this 84.50 into the 84, 83.90 handle. This is pretty big. It's a pretty big near-term key range uh, for Euro Pound. If we drift higher, I don't want to do anything with it. Okay, sit tight, look for exhaustion on a way up for another entry. But, you know, I'm not really interested in playing the long side of Euro Pound. Um, if anything, I, I would be looking for a rally to get back on the shorts. Okay, this is a key support, though, so expect a little bit more of a pop off that region. Here's what the daily chart looks like. Just to show you why that's so critical, you know, this is the slope that we've been working with off the 2015 lows. This is the 200-day moving average, which we closed below for the first time um, in, Let's see, in almost what, 14 months, 15 months? It's the first time we closed below it. 
So you close below it, but you came into this key support target. This is a 1618 extension from the decline off the highs. This is a 786 retracement from the ascent off the lows. Um, and again, could get a little bit of a bump, test back into 80, uh, 470 even, uh, but then we look for the break. Downside targets 8350 and 8260 would be a nice 100 off the high there. But this is very precarious, so be careful. Don't get chopped up here in Euro Pound. Again, it's a slow, slow burning trade, so it's like death by a million cuts um, <laughs> um, on this kind of trade when you're on the wrong side of it. You just got to kind of stare at it. But longer story short, I do think you can get a pop from here. If you do, by the way, some areas of interest where we would start to look for possible reentry. Just want to see what this looks like. Okay, so the 236 is here. We're testing that now. 38.2. Okay, so I'm going to take this off. I think there's going to be a lot of noise here. I'm just going to leave that 618 on there. There you go. Still be looking for possible re-entries around these targets. Hmm. Nice little slope line there. Where'd that come from? All right, so there's a parallel right here. You see, I just eyed this out right now. Uh, if you extend it off the low from October 11th, support, 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 break, acceleration, support, support, almost perfect support last night. So again, expect some upside from here. You'd be looking to sell that rally. Look for exhaustion. Where could we find key resistance on Euro Pound? So my bearish invalidation level, where'd I have it last night? Oh, I think last week it was still 84.43. Um, at this point, yeah, you, you still have to keep it, unfortunately on this, Mohammed, you'd still have to keep key resistance and bearish invalidation at the weekly open, all the way up at 85.50. For me, near term, if this breaks, if this range breaks to the upside, that could lead to a nice rally. Uh, but I'd ultimately be looking to sell that just because of my broader bias on the pair. Okay, but areas of interest for those exhaustions would be 84.88 and this key region, 85.19 into 85.30. I'd be looking for entries along both these. Key resistance would be the weekly open, okay? And that converges on the upper parallel as we get towards the end of the week here. And the, actually, this is basically into next week. 27th. Mohammed, does that make sense? Look, this might hold and we might just break down lower. That would be like an ideal situation. I don't even want to see it rebound too hard. But as long as we are making this rebound, you have an outside uh, candle reversal here off the lows. That's something that you want to pay attention to. Let's see if it was a one hour. Even on the hourly chart, you have an outside key reversal off support. You know, these are things that typically will give you a little bit more of a bounce. Make sense? He says, yeah, okay, cool. You got it, Mohammed. Uh, so Euro Pound. No change to any of those levels from last night. Again, we came into key support. Lock, look for that near-term rebound to get back on the short side. Sterling was another one um, that played out really, really well. Coming into near-term resistance at 125. Bearish invalidation at 125.24. We came right into 125 and spilled right over. So the turnaround took down that uh, 2016 low day close again at 24.33. Remember the broader game plan for the pound, guys. I still think we're on the right track. Um, we're looking for a new low to buy. The one thing I just want to continue to press on everyone is this slope that you see here in blue. It's, easily, it's more easily seen on the daily chart. Okay, it's the 50 line. Clean resistance, 
breakthrough acceleration, support, 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 support. And that converges on the 100-day moving average. So, you know, ideally you get a downside break to surpass 124.33. You start to look for support near 22.60 or 22 for uh, the break higher. I don't know if that's going to materialize and we're still in consolidation. All I can tell you is that we are favoring a downside move. So within this consolidation, uh, what we've been favoring is just selling into resistance. Um, David says he lost voice. Guys, can I just get a sound check? Can everyone hear me fine? Test, test. You're good. Pete says AV, good. Ziad, thank you for that. Graham, okay, cheers, guys. That says David says he's back too. Okay, cool. Great, thank you, Peter. Uh, Graham, so um, where was I? Within the confines of this range, I am selling. Every time it gets near resistance, I just take a scalp. I've been very, very super light. Like, you know, whatever your typical trade size is, guys, X. You know, I've been doing a third of X. So even, you know, just trying to keep it really light until we get a little bit more of a definitive break of this direction. Uh, but like we've been saying, and I think Jamie's on the same page with me on this, um, we have been for a while, just looking for a new low beyond the monthly low we made here. And the reason for that, guys, is the wave count would complete a correction at that point and would really give us a little bit more conviction for trying to play the long side. So long story short, still like selling rallies in uh, pound near term just for a stab lower where we do want to inevitably get long if we can near 2260 or 2220. A breach above 2524 shuts this thing down. Okay, you're looking for a rally towards 2570 at that point, the monthly open, and key resistance into 2670, 2680. So as we noted last night, this is still going to be our bearish invalidation level. No change on that. Downside targets, look for the weekly open, 2405, 2346, 2360, as we said. And then again, levels of interest for possible exposure on the long side. Any questions on Sterling? All right, we're making good time here. That is British Pound. Nice turn at resistance. That was number five. Number six, Dollar Cat. Um, so Looney looked like this, as I noted yesterday, it wasn't the sexiest looking chart. It is, you know, there's a lot going on. I completely recognize that, but I just wanted to highlight, uh, you know, where we were in slope, uh, because I did adjust this. I published a piece on daily effects, but afterwards there's a little bit of an adjustment I made that deadened the slope a little bit, uh, and gave us a little bit better of a, of a, a gauge on price. So here's what I'm looking at with dollar CAD, uh, first yeah, Muhammad Gold. I'll put that down. Uh, dollar Mex, I don't really follow, to be completely honest with you, Peter, but I'll take a look for you. No problem. You're in the right place. All right. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, the data this morning did fuel the move. Let me just zoom this out a little bit to give you a better picture. And I know there's a lot of lines here, guys, but let me just break it down for you real quick. Uh, we'll start on the daily chart. So the daily chart looks like this. It's really not that complicated. You have your pitchfork that we've been following. Don't worry about that. The only thing I've been looking at is support is this trend line. We talked about this yesterday. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven touches, and the turn higher, and this median line formation, okay, with the lower parallel, which caught all the lows that we made so far this year. Looking for a break above the 50 line, we got it. Yesterday, we tried to make it through that 200-day moving average. We could not. We pulled right back and closed below it. So as I said in the report, I did think that there was a you know, risk for a pullback, but inevitably you had to respect the upside while above that 50 line. That's exactly what happened. It kind of just pulled right back. Okay. 
we went and probed right below the 50 line, that 236 retracement, then popped right back through. Took out uh, 131.60, uh, and we took out 132.09, which is that 38.2 retracement, and the median line. Okay, next big side, uh, next big upside target is still 3227. It's not that far away. Okay, that's a 618 retracement, and that's the actual concerted median line of the entire formation off the highs. So, certainly a little bit bigger of a beefy uh, level here at 3227 for, for dollar cat. Now, a lot of people will be saying, well, Mike, what are the implications? Why, you know, how can you take such a stance, you know? crude is running through resistance and it's surging well I don't think anyone in here got tricked by that because we've been all looking at this chart and I know you guys are sick of looking at this chart but I'm gonna show it to you anyway okay um, 55 54.75 into 55 you can't get excited on anything until we close above that level okay um, it's a huge Fibonacci multi-year uh, confluence of the 618 extension off the high, seven or off the low rather, the 786 off the high from 2015, the upper median line parallel of this multi-year formation. It's stacked up here and the yearly opening range high is right there. So any way you slice it, you know, as people were all starting to throw their hands up in the air yesterday and saying crude is going to 60 bucks, um, you got to know the levels. You got to know the levels. So I don't have near-term targets per se on on, uh, on crude, but here's the daily. And the biggest tell in the daily was that we didn't close above 54.75. In fact, we couldn't even close above 54.30. Okay, and that for me was just a you know a clear tell. Uh, on that move higher as well was actual divergence which we haven't really seen because the price action, while it's been making higher spikes, the closes have actually been pretty pretty more or less in line. So that wasn't much divergence. This close pushed us into a new high. The oscillator did not push into a new high. And that's true divergence when it happens at resistance. Uh, Any way you want to always slice this, you want to bring it into a line chart, really being able to see it a little bit clearer with that higher peak, no higher peak, or no new extreme in the oscillator. So there was a million and one things yesterday to call this um, or, or to suggest that you're going to be running into a big resistance target in crude. And on that front, the dollar cat trade just made sense. Okay, so I still think you can probe that 3227 region. I don't want to get excited on any long exposure beyond this for now, guys. I do think you can get some kickback off that. Keep in mind, this is also the objective monthly opening range high. So despite my opinion, your opinion, or anyone's opinion, objectively this is your monthly high. Okay, so if you're holding long exposure, I'd shave some off at 3209, but I definitely would leave a little on to see if you can get that stretch near 3227. Uh, stops should definitely be at break even at this point. All right, questions on dollar CAD. Pretty clean, no change to any of the levels from yesterday. Uh, we just tagged this 3209. Again, near-term support remains unchanged. That's former resistance, 131.60. Your key resistance threshold at this point still is about 3227 region. All right, that's number six. Uh, Ziad says, how do you play not gas from here? We'll take a look at commodities in a second. Gary uh, says, sorry, I'm late to the room, no worries. Uh, have you covered the abomination yet? No, we didn't cover dollar yen yet, but we will. Let me jot it down here. I got all your questions, guys. Gold and dollar peso, I haven't forgotten. Uh, so before we do, um, let me talk about pound yen real quick, Gary, because that's actually the yen pair that I favor. Pound yen and euro yen are the ones that I like right now. Uh, I don't know what the hell to do with dollar yen, to be completely frank with you. I just don't like it. I don't like where it is. I don't like how it's performing. Uh, so I haven't really focused on it. But here's pound yen. And for pound yen, it followed the game plan perfectly from earlier in the week. So if we go to the intraday charts and go to the update um, from the 20th, which was Sunday, or this was the Monday because the holiday, where's pound yen? Here's pound yen. So um, 
you know, you had a nice little consolidation. We came off of a big support. So on Sunday, we said, look, man, to start off the week, I want to see this rally start uh, to fail near the monthly open, um, drift higher, and then a turnover is exactly what we said. Uh, basically, that's exactly what we got. It drifted higher into the start of the week. The monthly open saw a little bit of a, of a, of a test of 42, and then this thing just dropped off. Liking the downside, you need to see a break below the monthly open here at 140. Excuse me, the weekly open uh, at 140. That converges on the median line here um, in a couple of days, or this is just a sliding parallel, but over the next uh, couple of hours, rather. So if we do see a downside break beyond that, I do like a move into 138.99 and 138.41. Ultimately, again, I do think pound yen moves higher. I just think that the risk from here is for another drop into this zone first, and this is the zone you want to be very careful of, okay? Uh, if we break, like I said, these are the downside targets you want to look for, but right now the focus is on a drop into this parallel, which has caught all of these lows. Here's what the daily chart looks like, by the way. One more time. So this, you know, this line right here has no significance. It's a 38.2. It's nothing that's like earth-shattering. But look what it catches, the close, the close, the exact low, and right now converges again on 39.16 to 39.80. 39.60 and 39.80 uh, comes in just below the weekly open. So any way you slice it, uh, I think you can get this a little bit lower before you call it a day. So, is that because of, by way of yen strength, um, or is that by the way of sterling weakness? I think it's a little bit of both. What a beast pair, LOL, says Muhammad. Yeah, you remember this, right? A dragon slayer, my man. Yeah. Uh, but guys, it played out perfectly. It played out perfectly, and sometimes it's better to be lucky than skill, but the monthly open held as we had expected, bearish invalidation still remains at that 4330 so as long as we stay below this I still like the short side this is the level we need to clear uh, to get this thing going for a little bit more of a, of a concerted pullback any questions on pound yen no 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 change to any of the levels from from the Monday update All right, that was number seven. Let's jump into some of the crosses here that you guys have some questions on. I might as well take dollar yen first since we're on the yen uh, in general. Uh, here's what the dollar yen looks like. So on its face value, um, this is for Gary. On its face value, my man, the only thing I'm looking at here is that it's made a, a clear weekly opening range. That's it. Um, I guess the daily chart is what you have to focus on. As I said, um, if you guys remember when we were talking about this last month, wake me up when you get to 111.40, 111, or 115.52. Well, we didn't quite make it there. Uh, the break back above the uh, monthly open did shift our focus higher last week. It failed right at the 50 line, pulled back, checked former channel resistance as support. So, you know, you could get in a one last low into that trend line that would complete a decent near-term correction and then blast off? I don't know. Um, put a gun to my head, I would say look for the pullback first uh, before you get back on the long side, but right now, you're sitting right above the weekly and monthly opens. So what, uh, do I wanna short into that? No. You know, if anything at this point, if we get into 112.57, might be an area, that's last week's low, uh, let me snap these lines real quick. Hold on, guys. Um, I'm saying, isn't that inverse head and shoulders on the daily chart? It could be. It could be. But the thing, the thing is with this, guys, and I, and I don't mean to beat up on you. I say this every single time. Whenever people tell me this, this head and shoulders formation you can't front run those. There's no way to front run a head and shoulders formation. If this is a head and shoulders formation, this is what I would interpret as the neckline, and that's the break that would put us bullish if we are in an inverse head and shoulders formation. Until this line breaks, Mohammed, 
this is nothing. This is nothing. So if we if we rally into this and it holds, it could be just a consolidation pattern. I see where people are getting. You're not the first person to say that. I see where people are starting to look for the head and shoulders formation. But the whole purpose of identifying a formation of that nature is to get the measured move of where you want to target uh, your profit. Uh, but for me to try to effectively trade that before it triggers or before it breaks or before it validates that it's even a head and shoulders, it's very, very difficult. So, yeah, I would agree that if we break that neckline, sure, it would give me a nice objective measured move. As it stands right now, you know, I do think you're still trading within this formation. You can get a drop back into that parallel, but basically I'm still acting constructive above this. Well, I guess today above this parallel. Does that make sense, Mohammed? About the head and shoulders? Let's see what the near-term chart looks like. One twelve thirty-one. Yeah, you know what we'll do. One twelve thirty nine, one twelve forty. That's what I'd be looking at. Sort of a breakdown zone there. Um, but that's the parallel seven six four retracement. You're pretty darn close to those swing lows you made back here. An area of interest on a spike, on an emotional move. Maybe you get it today on Yellen um, for where you might want to see exhaustion and start to look for long entries. But broadly speaking, you're coming into the butter zone. This would have been a perfect entry if we had just gotten that last low. I would have loved to play this rally, um, but hindsight's always 2020. So look for a, a, a you know possible drop slippage here. If we break the weekly opening range high, look for 114, 114.80, 115. This is the big spot. As you head near 116, that daily chart highlights some pretty major resistance. All right, no triggers on dollar yen. 30 and five minutes show divergence. You're absolutely right. That's strong divergence on the five minute. Wouldn't say it's strong divergence, but it is divergence here on the one minute as well. Yeah, I could see a little re rebound there as well. Keep in mind where you are in time, okay? U.S. markets come online in just under uh, 17 minutes here. Okay. Uh, moving right along, that is dollar yen number eight. Um, let me take a jump into the commodity blocks, and then we'll try to see what's going on in peso here uh, for Pete. Uh, as far as gold is concerned, I just want to touch base real quick on gold. There's really not much uh, on my end that I want to discuss. You know, you're still holding key resistance at 1240. Uh, Sarub, are you in the room? I saw you tweeting at us last night. You're asking whether we're still looking uh, at gold or not on the long side. I don't. As I tweeted at you last night, I'm not really comfortable taking a long stance on the metals right now at these levels. We're at resistance. I do think the broader trades remain constructive, but I don't want to buy here at resistance, even on a near-term basis. Uh, I think the idea that we had last week was right to stay long or to favor longs above 112.18, as you were asking in, in on Twitter, but we got that move. Right, Sarub? Here was the move. It came into 119 and rallied. Uh, do I want to still play that range again? Probably not. If we break down from here, I do think that you look for a new low, okay, and that would risk a move down towards the May uh, low day close, somewhere near 112 again. I keep saying 112, 1200 guys. Um, but this is pretty big Fibonacci and structural resistance, okay? So be mindful of 1240, period. Until that gives way on a closed basis, I do not want to try to press this on the long side. Uh, so what was the gold question for Mohammed? Does that make sense on gold? Conwall says silver levels, please. Silver looks like this. So silver is a sneaky, sneaky trade right now. I have no, um, well, let me take a step back. We were talking about 1788. Uh, we were talking about this critical area of resistance. 
Um, there is a near-term upslope that's working pretty well. This is what I don't like. The break of these downslopes, man, you didn't see any acceleration. Um, momentum's flatlining. Even the 200-day moving average break, you know, you're sitting at it at support right now. So I can't continue to favor the long side from what the momentum profile looks like here, at least from these levels. If we get back into the monthly open and move, say, here, that would be very interesting for me. Okay, that takes you into like 1753. Uh, a nice objective target, the median line for the current operative ascending slope, okay, and the former resistance slope line as support. So drop into this zone would be interesting for me to start to look for a possible re-entry on the long side. I just think that the advance looks tired here. I think it looks real tired. It's the same as the last rally in Aussie dollar. Mohammed, I completely agree with you. And you guys know my frustration with the Aussie last week. Yeah. And I don't... Here's what Aussie dollar looks like, by the way. Remember that, that pitchfork that we added? It is actually still holding. Uh, and in fact, that rally that we had in overnight trade got a perfect tag to Aussie's resistance. So it looks like Aussie actually might do something constructive uh, this week besides just chop the hell around. Um, but let me snap these levels for you. It's not the cleanest setup, which is why I haven't been highlighting it in the reports. But just to put some color on this. Oof. That is beautiful. 7627. It's a sexy spot right there. Median line comes right off the highs there. 100% extension from the decline off the lot the last week's high. And this parallel in red, which extends off the lows. Now, is Aussie going to actually do something this week? I don't know. Um, I would hope so. This thing has got me all hot and bothered. But to get back to the previous question uh, on silver, uh, Conwall, does that make sense? You know, I just think that there's really nothing here to do. It's a super tight range. If you're looking to intraday trade this, which I know you do, um, it's got a very clean weekly opening range, right? I'd be booking at 1805 um, and, nine, and 1790. Really wouldn't, wouldn't probe anything beyond that range until we finally get the definitive break. Uh, and again, guys, today the dollar may react to, to the FOMC minutes. Again, my personal expectation is not real, but, you know, if it does, I think the dollar is vulnerable to the downside, if anything. With the way that the dollar index is trading, the, converge, the divergence that we've been seeing, and the fact that we're probing some pretty key regions of resistance. I don't think so, Gary. No, I don't, no, don't want to take that from you, man. He says, I am obviously the retail crowd, as dollar yen looks like a long to me. Quick, possibly stupid question, uh, but are you guys at FXCM considered a part of the non-retail crowd? Uh, first of all, we don't work for FXCM, uh, Gary. Um, uh, I think if you're referring to m myself and Jamie, uh, our contributions to Daily FX, Daily FX is actually owned by IG Group now. Uh, it has been since November. So we have no affiliations with FXCM anymore and have not for nearly five months, four months. Um, Kamal says, okay, thank you, sir. Hey, more than welcome. More than welcome. So we got gold. We got silver. Uh, dollar peso was uh, a question. And Nat Gas, I got you on Nat Gas. Let me do Nat Gas real quick. Get through the comms. She can't catch a break, huh? This thing's just getting slaughtered. That slope is not right. That's weird. Huh.
Okay. Yeah. So look, this is this is classic breakdown. There's nothing. I don't think there's anything tricky here. Um, momentum is an oversold territory. That's when the market has the most push. You do not want to try to fight this until it returns. Uh, you can see instances of that of when we broke back here in 2015. This thing broke into oversold territory and stayed there for over a week, and giving you a decline of another what 30, 40 cents to the downside. So. Um, the risk is lower. The next major key target I would have on my menu would be right here at the 618 retracement. That's 124. Uh, excuse me. That's 24, 244. Excuse me. Um, which is the 618 retracement. Uh, it's also the low close, not the low day close, but the low close. The low day close actually comes in at 20 uh, at 253 here. Um, so that would be your first soft target. But more importantly, with slope to take into account. That 618 at 244 uh, comes in alongside the low close. And you can see that by just bringing this again into a line chart and identifying that spot right there. OK, um, key resistance at this point, former key support, 272. I'd be looking for immediate resistance right there. And the focus remains lower, Conwall, below that region. That's what I would have as my near-term bearish invalidation level. Does that make sense? But the near-term car uh, targets, they need to carve out, you know, some more, you know, I, I don't really have any scalping targets that I would give you with any type of comfort at this point. We'd need to take another look at this. You're, you're heading into lows we haven't seen in quite some time. He says, yes, sir, hey, you're more than welcome. Um, dollar peso, peso was it, right, for Pete? Hey, Pete, you still in the room? Oh, there he is. Here's dollar peso, man. Let's see what she's doing. Hmm. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Just want to see where the basic retracements come in. Okay. And we'll make this a different color so we know this is a longer term way out there. Bring it back into a day. And it shows us a basic 236 retracement right here. Uh, almost. It's going to converge on the 200 day moving average and the lower parallel heading basically into the start of March trade. So things to keep into account. This is going to be big next month. Actually, that first high makes it even cleaner with the touch here of support, touch here of support, break lower. You're really looking for that drop. Still think you look lower. Still think you look lower.
Now, if we take this into a 240-minute chart, let's say, get a closer look. Here's your monthly open. Set a monthly low. You test the monthly high. You sit at the monthly low. You break. This also constitutes a break of the monthly opening range. As far as I'm concerned, let me take this back to the daily real quick. Boom, boom, boom. It's ugly, but it would be considered. And again, sorry for the... Um, delay here, uh, Pete. I'm just looking at this for the first time for you. I haven't really been following this trade, uh, but I'm glad you asked about it because it does look interesting. And one last retracement I would look at is just this advance on the election day. Um, just want to see the 618. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. All right. Now we're getting somewhere. Sweet. All right. So that 618 retracement of the advance just off the election rally comes in right in line with that basic 236, right in line with the lower parallel. And that continues to highlight 19... Uh, 54 into 1962, let's say, uh, as a key area of support here for peso. Pete, does that help? How correlated is, is oil to peso? Uh, I haven't ran a correlation on these two in a while. I really couldn't tell you if that's something that's even important right now. Um, I think the crude correlation, the strongest one, is still going to be to loony. And that's one of the reasons that we've liked the dollar cat long is because we do have crude coming into key resistance right here, right? Um, this thing turned over way before crude did, so I don't want to get uh, too excited. But interesting setup here on uh, on dollar peso. It does help clear. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Michael. Hey, you're more than welcome, man. Good to see you in the room. Yeah, you're welcome, um, uh, sir. IG and index are the same are and uh, yes nadex yeah yep they own nadex um so again conwall it's uh they bought daily effects so the contributions that myself and jamie make to daily effects yeah that's through it's all ig fxcm sold uh daily effects back in november or i think it was october Uh, Mohammed, get out of here, man. He says, sorry for asking too many questions. No such thing. Uh, he says, but if you have time, can we take a look at KiwiN? We can and we will. Why? Well, we actually highlighted KiwiN, if you don't recall, earlier. Here. Here's a KiwiN. And here's KiwiN now. Where art thou, KiwiN? All right, so the daily chart first. Uh, looks pretty clean. Uh, you know, we exactly where this thing needed to hold, if where our interpretation was correct, held last week. And that was this region here. The monthly open, the upper parallel, um, and another failed attempt to really make any progress above the 2016 open. So here's a move lower. The monthly opening range remains intact. And that's the only reason I'm kind of curbing my appetite on the right now. Also, I'm going to come back to this in a moment, but also Kiwi Dollar, right? That came into a key support yesterday, critical. 200-day moving average, 100-day moving average, to the pip, and then rebounded. So I'm curbing my near-term downside appetite, but I do want to see the break. Uh, and certainly for Kiwi Yen, it's right on course. And this is why, guys, most of the reports I've been saying, you know, I like the crosses. I don't just... I'm not too thrilled with the dollar right now. Uh, this is another one that 
This made a clear and objective break of the weekly opening range low with this move. The median line is just lower. The target is 80.65 on that dip. Uh, nothing's changed. You basically came uh, from last week, if you guys recall, we talked about this in the webinar yesterday. We broke that lower support, channel support, came back, checked it as resistance, boom, and just pushed off. Took out that downside target at 81.07. Uh, we started off the week with a pretty nice opening range just above that level. Here's the break. Looking for, could see a little interruption here, but ultimately looking for a drop into 80.65. That would complete uh, a nice 618 extension from the entire decline off the highs. So if we'll see if we can't get any play off that. But uh, if you're holding shorts, you're good. I don't, you know, I don't want to tell you to get out of them per se. Um, in, you know, immediate resistance is going to be back at 81. 81.14 is the weekly open. As long as you stay below that, I think uh, any short exposure would be all right. But um, yeah, at this point, I want to just clean that up, and all the targets will remain unchanged. Questions. I am short from eighty-one thirty-five. Says Mohammed. Love it. Love it. Yeah, that would have been an awesome, what was your, what was your stop, like 10 pips or so? <laughs> That's perfect. That was a perfect entry. Yeah, so look, at this point, if you've been holding that entire position, again, this is just my humble opinion, Mohammed, you know, not a trade recommendation, but I would say like shave some off because if you do get a bounce off that, you could see this thing rally back into 81. I'd hate to see you, um, or 81.15, I'd hate to see that, but even if it does, you know, I think you're all right. I think 80.65 would be sort of the entry to go for or the uh, rather target to go for. And not only that, it's the exact lows. It's not just, you know, this is an extension, a true Fibonacci extension from the highs. It actually matches up just coincidentally with that low. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Like where your head's at. Good stuff, Mohammed. Okay. A little bit longer term of a take on it. Sure. Okay, um, I think I got all every, through everything. Dollar peso was number ten, Kiwi yen was number eleven, and we are good to go. Um, okay. Uh, Thank you a lot for, uh, from your explanations uh, learning. Again, thank you, says Peter. Hey, you're more than welcome. Uh, just a quick note uh, to, for Kaza, if you're in the room, I just need you to submit a new um, request through Twitter, not the Twitter request form. Just go to Twitter and hit follow. Um, I think that's the only thing you need to do, and we'll, we'll get you right back on board there. All right, guys, we'll wrap it up here. Uh, again, keep in mind, 2 o'clock, you'll get those uh, release uh, from Yellen, uh, the minutes, rather. You know, just, just if you have dollar exposure, just be mindful of it. I don't want, necessarily want to plan a trade strategy around it, but mean, be mindful. Uh, also, keep in note, Jamie's on tap uh, at 12 o'clock, so we'll have Jamie on board with the midweek strategy webinar to go over a little bit more of a longer-term approach on some of the trades that we're following. Uh, don't forget that in just a few hours. Best of luck trading, guys. I'll see you all tomorrow morning. Cheers.